Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ala ba'd Ayu ala habati fillah in a very powerful and profound narration of one of the salaf of this ummah rahimahumullah jami'an we learn the importance of not only practicing what little knowledge we have but that as the Salaf used to give preference to avoiding the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala versus doing good deeds what does this mean for us Ahabitifillah? this means that all of us, or many of us, do some deeds of Iman, and some deeds of goodness, some deeds of piety. I'm sure all of us are fasting this holy month of Ramadan, which is wajib. It's an obligation. It's something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded for the faithful. Ya ladina amanu kutiba alaykum siyam, kama kutiba ladina min qablakum la'alakum tatakun. O you who believe, Fasting was prescribed for you, as it was uh, prescribed for those who came before you, in order that you would gain taqwa. So all of us are fasting. But how many of us are avoiding the muharramat? That when we break our fast, we don't break our fast on haram. Or that we figure our fasting is only during the day, so now the night is open. Look at what you want. Visit whom you want. Do whatever you want. Engage and indulge in whatever you want. Halal wa haram. Listen to this powerful narration of one of the salaf. Qala sahl ibn Abdullah rahmatullahi alayhi qala ليس كل من عمل بطاعة الله صار حبيب الله ولكن من اجتب من اجتب من اجتنب ما نهى الله عنه صار حبيب الله ولا يجتنب الآثم الآثم إلا الصديق المقرب وأما أعمال البر فيعملها البر والفاجر ابن جوزي رحمة الله عليه في his book سيفة الصفوة narrated a very powerful narration as we mentioned the narration of Sahl ibn Abdullah Rahmatullah alayhi wa radiyallahu ta'ala majma'een who said not everyone who does acts of obedience to Allah becomes one of those beloved to Allah However, the one who avoids what Allah has prohibited becomes the beloved to Allah. And no one avoids prohibitions except the truthful ones and those who are close to Allah. As for the deeds of the righteous, then the righteous do them and the wicked do them. Let's stop in this 
on some of these points in this athar of one of the salaf of this ummah, Sahal ibn Abdullah, and this great wisdom that he exhibited. He said that just for doing obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's not going to make you beloved to Allah. Doing acts of, uh, uh, doing the commandments of Allah. Of course that's a part of it. And that both the wicked and the righteous do good deeds and they do acts of obedience. How many people do we know, and maybe possibly ourselves, doing, <coughs> doing wicked deeds, at the same time doing good, doing some good, maybe guarding the salat. How many people do we know who pray, but we know them for other major sins? Or how many of us are known for good, but only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the wickedness that we do. So both the wicked and the righteous do good deeds. But only the truthful ones, those close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, avoid his prohibitions. And those are the ones who will be beloved to Allah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all to be loved by him. To not be just those who love him, but to be those who truly love him and who are loved by him. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.